What do you mean you don't know? And yeah. you think that you're not eating and you're getting I don't want to get malnourished either. Do you look like you're malnourished? So whilst we've been dying in a heat wave, I've been watching a few episodes of the show My 600 Pound Life with my girlfriend. I don't know why it came up. I'm not one for watching American reality shows, especially after what I've seen of Dr. Phil. I've got free videos on him if you're interested in my criticisms there. As a therapist though, naturally there's a lot I would want to say about My 600 Pound Life, so let's just get into it. If there's much background noise in this video by the way, that's because this is currently the hottest day ever recorded in Britain. I'm in the hottest part of the country and all the windows are open, I'm not going to close them to get the sound quiet. So what is this show if you're not already familiar? I wasn't familiar myself because it's not a show we get on British TV, but it seems very popular in America and it's run for nine seasons and counting I think. There even seems to be a fair amount of YouTubers reacting to the show as big as the Sidemen. 360 kilograms! 360, 360 kilograms! That's five of me! Their arms, move? their arms is me. Legs, one leg is me. Each episode is basically a different person who weighs 600 pounds or more and it kind of details their life over the course of meeting the bariatric surgeon Dr. Now who basically offers them weight loss surgery that the show itself will pay for if they can prove their commitment to losing weight by following his diet program for a month or two and losing however much weight. The first part of the show basically introduces us to the person and their life and all its difficulties then they travel to visit Dr. Now, then they meet and get weighed, he gives them a diet plan and tells them if they lose however much weight before their next appointment he'll approve them for the weight loss surgery and then we see difficulties with them achieving that goal most of the time. Sometimes they struggle to keep to the plan but do find their way forwards in the end. Sometimes they're in denial about how they failed to keep to the plan, sometimes Dr. Now gets angry at them and it either ends rather bleakly with the person not losing any weight and a vague conclusion of like, well, not everybody can be helped, or they find their way forwards and we typically then get the last part of the show being the time after their surgery and how there are still challenges to face then. It's at this point that Dr. Now typically urges them to see a therapist and we see how they manage this before the episode ends. I tend to like trying to be fair in my videos, so there are some positives to this show. Surgery costs ridiculous amounts in the United States as far as I understand and this show offers to pay the costs for the surgery that may very well help save their lives. That's obviously a good thing. I also like that the patients are expected and encouraged to lose weight on their own before the surgery begins. It does a good job emphasising the surgery is no quick fix, there are still great challenges and emotional difficulties to work through and in the same vein it doesn't advocate crash diets because as far as I understand, I might be wrong, but in the long term they tend not to work and often make things worse. Crash diets being like when you do something incredibly extreme for a week or two or however long to lose a ton of weight before going back to eating normally. I don't think they tend to work long term. I also think psychologically they're not a great idea. I think a consistent long term healthy diet plan that you can live by I think that empowers you much more and you get to feel positive about what you're eating, whereas I think crash diets then tend to make going back to eating again afterwards feel more negative and shaming and you probably end up in an unhealthy cycle of crash dieting and then eating and then wanting to crash diet again and things never really getting anywhere. So I like that, I like the slow pace of the show as well, no mad editing that I typically associate with American TV. Hi. How you doing? Uh, I've seen better days, but I'm doing okay, <laughs> relatively. So, I see that you're in the hospital, huh? Yep. And no forced conclusions either, it doesn't try to wrap everything into some contrived rosy ending so that the viewers can come away feeling happy when that might not always fit the feelings. There are a few other positives I'm probably going to weave in as we talk about it more in depth, but all the same, this is a weird show. It seems to market itself as inspiring, but I'm really not sure that's the case. 
You know, Dr. Now can be pretty blunt with his patients at times. When they don't stick to his diet plan, he does not mince his words. You gain 60 pounds of water on a car ride here because you're sitting up? That's not reality. I can play insane. I want chocolate, I want chocolate, I want chocolate, I want chocolate. <laughs> so chocolate is more important to you than living, apparently. What do you mean you don't know? And yeah. you think that you're not eating and you're getting I don't want to get malnourished either. Do you look like you are malnourished? And to be fair, there are grounds for him to respond like this. These people are dying. They have to take the dieting seriously if they want to save their lives. He is their doctor. I can imagine that is very frustrating for him. And I also think sometimes a sharp shock can potentially help, provided you also have positive support around you in other places. And I don't think this show always provides that. But I think it can work. Certainly not always, certainly not most of the time. Sometimes it can just be felt like shame that leads you to resist even further or feel even more helpless and just makes everything worse. And it concerns me a little that Dr. Now doesn't come across as particularly trauma informed in that sense. Increasingly, all doctors need to understand it if they want to get through to patients who seem resistant, but my issue is more that this is TV and Dr. Now's telling offs are framed as big, important things. A lot of emphasis is always placed on him stating the facts and them struggling to respond and never truly getting into exactly why they're struggling so much. Just lots of, lots of different scenes in this show where Dr. Now tells them off and in that sense all of this show is framed for people I think who enjoy the idea of watching a medical professional rip into an obese person for eating too much. Hence why there are YouTube videos you can find called Dr. Now's Most Savage Moments on My 600 Pound Life. All in the exact same vein as people who watch Dr. Phil because they want to watch someone suffering with delusions for example or other serious mental health issues just get attacked and shamed and laughed at for living in a fantasy land because you may live in fantasy land but i do not <laughs> same even as all those youtube videos of someone destroying someone else in a debate we like to find targets we can point at and judge and project everything onto. And a TV show with an expert or medical professional at its heart gives us an excuse to forgo empathy in place of projection for a while. You see, the problem is that there is a bad, pretty much wrong public perception around morbid obesity and compulsive eating and things. People think about it the way they think about their own eating habits, like your ordinary person has encountered times where they've struggled with keeping in good shape. It's very difficult, not all of us manage it or care enough to manage it because it's not the end of the world. However, we imagine that if we were ever in such an extreme weight that it seriously threatens our health and our possibility of living, that's of course then we would stop eating so much. We could manage that if we needed to. And so then you can look at people on shows like this and think some people just don't have the sense to stop eating. Yes, it's hard, but you're killing yourself, so just stop. But it's just not as simple as that, by any stretch of the imagination. You know, imagine saying to a drug addict, just stop taking drugs. Imagine telling somebody depressed to just stop being sad. <laughs> it would be great if they could just do that, but... It's not that simple, you know? And if you are addicted to food, it's made particularly hard because you can't just completely avoid food. It's not like you can get rid of all the food in the house because you still need to eat, otherwise you'll die. You're kind of forced to have to have a bit of the thing you struggle with limiting and that must make it tremendously hard. The main point though is trauma. It is almost certainly a major factor behind these sorts of eating habits as can often be the case for addictions really. Sexual abuse can also be a factor behind compulsive eating, certainly not always, but sometimes, and in that kind of instance, overeating can then symbolically be a kind of physical protection, growing in size and armour, I suppose, or it can be an unconscious effort to make themselves less attractive to others, and therefore sparing them some of the fear that their abuse might be repeated. More generally though, shame for any number of reasons that involve past trauma is very likely. People perhaps who grew up constantly being told they were too ugly or too fat, slobby, that they were bad people. This is all a great simplification, there could be lots of different reasons and we'll talk more about shame later in relation to the show itself, but 
people typically suffering with depression here, anxiety, low self-esteem, some kind of past trauma. Eating then becomes part of a coping mechanism, it's a nourishing experience to eat, you know, as babies being fed relieves us from the unbearable discomfort and the threat of starvation and it can tend to be related to the nurturing care of a maternal presence or a paternal presence. When you're struggling with extreme emotional feelings, tapping into some of those more comforting experiences naturally would give you some relief. And Eating also gives you a slight dopamine hit, it's not, it's not about being hungry really, it's about the pleasure and the comfort and the slight high that comes from eating and how that spares you all of your pain for a brief while. So this isn't as simple as just stop eating because stopping that takes away their main method of coping with everything they've been through. And yet, we regularly see Dr. Now here, a skilled medical professional berating them because they haven't just stopped eating and making it sound as simple as that. I feel like showing this sort of stuff in the show without ever any moments where Dr. Now or someone else stops to talk to the camera and say, like, these are the sort of emotional struggles people like this can encounter and go into a little detail about the psychology there or something. You know, without that and just seeing this Dr. Now berating them, the casual viewer of this show might just take away, these are fat people too late lazy to save their own lives, aren't they stupid? And that's not great, is it? Um, <laughs> Even when the patients do talk about their past trauma in this show, which I'm not sure how comfortable they were opening up about or not, but even then it feels more just like the generic sob story bits that the show wants to include to make people care more. And when the patients do talk a bit in the show about some of their struggles, it feels like the producers have cut it down to keep it very simple. So they'll say they've been feeling low and that they just want to eat fatty foods or something, but we don't hear any of the emotion behind them feeling that way. Or sometimes it's simple things like them just traveling the car journeys to get to Dr. Now's clinic. Long road trips across America and the patients will say being in the car causes them so much pain to their body. but. There's never then a moment where it's explained why it causes pain, or Dr. Now or anyone else acknowledging how difficult that can be. Because there's none of that, it ends up just looking like this patient is lazy and whining, and it no doubt then makes the audience frustrated with this person because what they're going through hasn't been properly explained to us. I just find it so, so strange that in 90 minute episodes where almost all the narration and dialogue comes from the people themselves, we still get so little insight into their minds. A lot of the narration is scripted and just has them repeating the same surface level stuff over and over again. All of them in every episode where they'll all just kind of say, I've been struggling to stick to the diets, I'm in a lot of pain, but I know I can lose the weight, I know I can achieve my goals because I have to, if I don't then I could die, failure isn't an option. And they repeat variations on that sentiment over and over until the episode ends because it's what they've been told to say. Probably because it's what they feel people want to hear and I'm just left wondering who actually is this person? I know very little about them as a human or what they properly think or feel. So let's talk about shame now, okay? I feel like a lot of this show deliberately dehumanises the people on it. The whole first section of kinda getting to know them is just endless shots of them eating or struggling to move while the narration just says about how much pain they're in and how much they eat. And you get lots of weird camera shots, like they keep seeming to place the camera at crotch level for reasons I I really don't understand, what's that about? And every episode as far as I've seen seems to have a shower scene where they're completely or almost fully naked and you see them struggling to wash or require help to wash themselves. Why do we need to see that? <laughs> you know, we know, we know exactly why it's there. It's there to entertain people with gross out moments, perhaps even to laugh at or to judge. And this is near the beginning of the show as well, so this sets up a lens from which to view the entire show from. I don't feel comfortable with that about it, and more importantly, do these people really need to be put through these film shower scenes? A lot of them have suffered sexual abuse. Surely the last thing they want is to be left naked and exposed on camera. That just seems so insensitive to me. 
but they have to do it because that's what the TV show demands and if they don't then the TV show won't pay for their surgery. I think camera shots like this combined with the fact they never get to truly explain their feelings and the facts we actually learn nothing about their general life, you know, even like um, what are they into, what are their passions? Of course they might lack the motivation for a lot of those passions and some of that might have reduced without they feel emotionally, but just something beyond that they eat a lot and they watch TV in bed because their weight isn't their entire identity, you know, let's not chain them to that. Shame is a big factor in what causing these eating habits to begin with. They have low self-esteem and depression and probably feel awful about themselves. Those feelings can be a struggle for all of us at the best of times. Unbearably negative feelings though, so much so that they need to eat to give them some relief from thinking about how horrible they feel, but then they get bigger and that gives them another reason to feel bad about themselves so they feel even worse and they eat even more and it becomes a vicious cycle that in many ways is self-punishment because there's a chance they feel like they deserve that which is terribly sad and the worse it gets the more powerless and trapped and helpless they feel especially when they become physically unable to do anything which maybe then even infantilizes them are they then like passive, helpless children relying on others for everything. I don't like wording it that way, but that could be a dynamic that occurs or a feeling they experience as part of this. Perhaps that's because regression is another coping mechanism, or perhaps that's just that's how trapped they are. More shame is the very last thing these people need, and yet this show seems to be shaming and laughing at them. And generally in terms of interactions with people suffering situations like this, I don't want to confuse anyone. Saying that shame is bad doesn't mean being overly nice all the time and giving in to what they want and not challenging them. If you support someone struggling with things like this, they might get incredibly mad or even vicious at you if you refuse to enable them and that can either be so exhausting that you just give in or it might make you mad and you respond by getting angry and shaming them and neither of those responses are ideal. Maybe things do go wrong sometimes as I talked about in my tough love video you don't always manage perfectly and you sometimes need to repair the situations that go wrong. It can be hard, but a culture of just shaming people without even attempting to understand what they're going through, that, that doesn't help anyone. Ultimately, I think anyone in these sort of situations needs two things most of all, at least from an emotional point of view, probably other things, um, but these are just the ones I'm thinking of now. One is having opportunities to let go of some of the shame and the guilt. An episode here with a woman called Lashanta. She struggled to keep to the diet plan and Doctor now threatens that he was done with her. A shock that potentially could give you a motivation boost in the short term, not always, but potentially. However, it was really her experience with a therapist where she talked about how she blames herself for her son ending up in prison. If she hasn't exposed him to the world of dealing drugs at a young age, maybe he would have turned out better, maybe he wouldn't have ended up in prison. And the shame of that was so intense that she just didn't want to think about it or confront it, but the therapist helped her to do so, and then to find the courage to call her son and to talk about the situation, and he told her that he doesn't blame her in the slightest for how he turned out, that he loves his mum, and he then wrote her a heartfelt letter. And I think that experience with her son would have achieved way, way more to help her situation than Dr. Now telling her off would have done. Which then does baffle me as to why the people on this show aren't given therapy from day one, the second thing is that they need to be empowered, not further disempowered, which is a difficult thing to do, I admit. And I will credit Dr. Now for wanting them to prove that they can lose weight on their own before they're given surgery, because yes, losing some extra weight will make the surgery less dangerous, it's a very risky procedure, but more than anything, they then get the positive experience of discovering, yeah, I can achieve something here, what if I'm not completely useless and pathetic, what if I'm capable and strong enough and powerful enough to lose weight. Healthy eating and dieting shouldn't be framed as a negative restricting activity where it then feels like a punishment denying yourself nice foods. That just adds to the shame then and I think makes it even harder to succeed. Instead it should be positive enjoying the experience of eating healthy meals, how nice it feels to eat a salad, how um, 
just how healthy it makes you feel doing that, or just how generally good you then feel about yourself. It's difficult to explain that here, but I mean just uh, focusing on the positive rather than the shame, seeing the diet as something you want to do, not just because you need to lose weight and have this goal you need to hit, but recognising you actually feel better about yourself eating good food and proving that you can do that and discovering the ability to walk more and move again and things, how that actually long term makes you feel way better and happier than binge eating unhealthy stuff ever does. I think I'm trying to say at its best healthy eating feels less like restricting yourself than it does liberating yourself. It feels like a freedom, or should do. I'm not going to pretend I'm great at healthy eating. <laughs> um, my £600 life isn't all bad, but sometimes that blinds us to the problems. If anything, this video was a means to talk about our culture's general perception of obesity, so I hope it was interesting. Let me know what you think, comment your own experiences, thoughts, criticisms of what I've said, like the video if it merits a like, subscribe if you want more stuff, support me on Patreon if you want to help me keep making more stuff, but otherwise, hopefully see you next time. And as ever, a special thank you goes to Janice McMahon, Luke Hoare, Tree Chukaber, Michael Gallagher, Insquez, Samara Salsi, Joshua C. Follier and Chad Bramwell. Thank you.